Hey folks, today, we're digging into the history of train travel, so, sit tight, strap in, and let's roll down memory lane through the golden era of railroads. Back in the 1920 through the 1990, smoking in train cars was a regular thing. Folks used to puff away like there's no tomorrow. Trains had special sections just for lighting up smoking cars. People were cool with it for decades, but then health worries started hogging the limelight. Passengers began wanting smoke-free areas, and that's when the tide turned. The demand for non-smoking zones grew, and eventually, smoking cars got the boot. It's like a history lesson in changing preferences, you know? The smoking car scene took a nosedive because folks got more health conscious. As concerns about secondhand smoke and general well-being heightened, passengers started demanding cleaner air. Non-smokers wanted to ride without inhaling clouds of smoke. So, the powers that be listened, and smoking cars bit the dust. It's a classic case of changing times and priorities. Health trumps smoking, and that's why those smoking cars became a thing of the past. Back in the day, train travel was a classy affair with dining cars dishing out full-service meals. Imagine sitting on a train, getting served like you're at a fancy restaurant fine china, silverware, the whole shebang. But come the 1980s, people weren't as keen on fancy train meals. The demand for that kind of high-end dining hit the brakes, and trains started looking for ways to save some green. The deal with full-service dining cars going belly up was mostly about the dollars. Passengers weren't jazzed up about paying extra for a fancy feast on the train. Cost-cutting became the name of the game, and hauling around a full-service kitchen on wheels wasn't cutting it. So, they axed the dining cars, and we waved goodbye to that swanky dining on the train experience. It's just the way the train rolled dollars and cents, you know? Back in the day, trains were the go-to for hauling mail across the country. It was like the Mail Express choo-choo style. From letters to packages, trains were the postman's best buddy. But as time rolled on, things changed. Air travel and modern postal systems took the spotlight, and trains lost their grip on being the main mail movers. By the 1970s, the train mail services hit the brakes. The downfall of train mail services came down to progress and speed. Air travel and faster postal methods made trains look like they were chugging along in slow motion. People wanted their mail quicker, and trains couldn't keep up. So, by the 70, trains waving goodbye to being the Mail Express was just the way the postal cookie crumbled. Fast and modern took over, leaving trains in the dust. Back in the day, train travel had a front row seat for breathtaking views. Observation cars with open platforms were the bee's knees, offering folks panoramic scenes as the train rolled along. Picture it wind in your hair, unobstructed views. But then, things took a turn. The deal with open platform observation cars hitting the brakes was all about playing it safe. Safety concerns and new rules rolled in, putting a damper on the whole wind in your hair vibe. In the 1950s, they shut the door on those open platforms, bringing in enclosed observation lounges instead. It was like waving goodbye to the wild, open air experience to make sure everyone stayed on the safe side of the tracks. Safety first, scenery second, that's how the train rolled. Back in the day, travel was all about the high life, especially with luxurious parlor cars. These babies were decked to the nines plush seats, fancy decor, the whole shebang. It was like riding in the lap of opulence. But then, the good times hit a speed bump, the downfall of luxurious parlor cars was all about dollars and cents. The Great Depression rolled in, and folks were tightening their belts tighter than ever. Luxury became a tough sell when people were pinching pennies. Alongside that, travel tastes were shifting. Instead of fancy parlor cars, folks started leaning towards more practical options. So, economic pressures during the Depression and changing preferences made these opulent rides a thing of the past. Money talks, and in this case, it said goodbye to the lap of luxury on the tracks. Back in the day, red cap porters were the real deal at train stations. These guys were like the unsung heroes, helping folks haul their luggage. It was a solid gig, with passengers relying on them for a smooth boarding experience. But things took a turn when self-service options started rolling in and labor practices shifted gears. By the 1960s, these red cap porters found themselves on the outs. The demand for their services just dwindled away, and their roles faded into history. The red cap porter gig hit the skids due to a combo of changing times and evolving technology. Self-service options became the new sheriff in town, making it easier for travelers to handle their own luggage. Plus, the shift in labor practices meant that the demand for manual assistance 
assistance kinda dried up. As the world moved faster, the need for red cap porters just fizzled out, and by the 60S, their once crucial role was phased out for good. Long time ago steam-powered locomotives were the kings of the tracks. They chugged along, fueled by coal or wood, making cross-country travel possible. These behemoths were the backbone of rail transportation, ruling the rails until the 1950s. Diesel electric engines then stole the show, thanks to their efficiency and lower maintenance costs. Steam engines may be icons of nostalgia now, but they had their heyday. The shift was just a sign of the time's efficiency and cost-effectiveness were the new tracks to success leaving the once mighty steam locomotives in the nostalgic rear view. Back in the day, we had these cool RPO cars railway post office cars. They were like mobile mail sorting stations on trains. Imagine sorting your mail while cruising down the tracks. These bad boys were a hit during the early to mid-1900s, making mail delivery faster than ever. But come the 1970s, these cars went the way of the dodo. Mail volumes dropped, and technology took over with high-tech sorting facilities. The RPO cars couldn't keep up with the times, becoming obsolete as the world moved on from snail mail to the digital age. All right, buckle up. Picture this back in the day, high-end trains were more than just a way to get from A to B, they were rolling catwalks. Luxury trains like the Orient Express showcased fashion right there on board. Models strutting their stuff while folks sip their fancy drinks. The fashion show train lost steam because marketing folks had new tricks up their sleeves and passengers had different kicks. Marketing strategies evolved and the glitz of onboard fashion took a back seat. People wanted more than just a fashion show. They craved different kinds of entertainment. All right, here's the lowdown on brakemen. Back in the day, these guys were the real deal. They were the muscle on passenger trains, manually slamming on the brakes to slow things down. It was a hands-on gig, no doubt. But as time rolled on, things changed. By the 1960s, they became like the dinosaurs of the railroad because of air brakes and fancy automated systems taking over the brake game. So, why did these brake men fade into the sunset? Simple, technology played the trump card. Air brakes and automated systems started doing the brake job way better and safer. No need for a guy risking life and limb on the train roof when you got machines handling it. It was a shift from muscle to machines, and those brake men rolls, well, they got phased out faster than you could say full steam ahead. Well, there you go, folks a ride through the old school days of train travel. If you liked cruising down memory lane, give that like button a tap, throw in a subscribe for more throwback stuff, and drop your dissents in the comments. Till we meet again, safe travels!